Now the Bible has always had a interesting uh, discussion going on about putting up statues of people or or different characters from the Bible. Exodus 20 verse 4 through 5 says this, This is of the Ten Commandments, the second commandment, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Now the point of that commandment is clear throughout the rest of Scripture as well. Psalm 97, 7 says this, Confounded be all they that serve graven images, that boast themselves of idols. Worship him, all ye gods. Now that doesn't mean we can't have memorials, we can't have statues, we can't have uh, images uh, that are set up. The point is not to worship those images, uh, to, but we can respect those images. And this has been a, a testy thing. Over time, as people don't understand this teaching, they have uh, twisted and turned it. And there have been things called the iconoclastic controversy. Um, that happened in the 8th century that caused people to go into churches literally tearing out any kind of a image, a picture, or a statue of anybody who uh, might represent someone from the Bible because they believed they were worshiping these images. Now it's clear that's not what God was saying so long ago. For in Exodus 25, 18 through 20, God makes the statement that they were to build the Ark of the Covenant with the images of cherubim, these angels there, uh, on top of it. So God is not against artwork. God is not against statues and different things. God is against you worshiping an idol, an image that you set up and you say, this is God. During the iconoclastic controversy in 726, the Emperor Leo III publicly took a position against any images or icons, as they were called. These images and statues of Christ were destroyed as churches were ransacked. Uh, now, now, there's debate on, on whether every image is perfectly the same as it should have been. We didn't have a, a camera back then to take a picture of Jesus. We know he was a Jewish man. Uh, some people look at the Shroud of Turin. Many of the images that we make are, uh, throughout history have reflected on what the Shroud of Turin looked like, which is an interesting study in and of itself. But regardless... Uh, I don't believe that, that, that we should tear down these images. There is something more to this. This started an iconophile argument, uh, meaning that it was pro-icon, pro-image, uh, by St. John of Damascus. He claimed that in Christ, the meaning of the Old Testament prohibition was revealed. God prohibited any representation of God or anything that could be worshipped as God because it was impossible to depict the invisible God in the Old Testament. Any such representation would thus be an idol, especially a false representation or false God. But in Christ's person, God became visible as a concrete human being. So painting is necessary as a proof that God truly, not seemingly, became man. The fact that one can depict Christ witnesses God's incarnation. Finally, many of the Christians gathered together in the 7th Ecumenical Council in 787 and made the decree that it was fine for Christians to respect the holy icons, the images, but they were to prohibit, at the same time, their adoration as idolatry. So there is a clear line here about what the Bible states and what Christian history has agreed upon for centuries, though there is still argument upon this. I think that we can all agree that we put up statues to respect the individual who came before and not to worship that statue.